Hello, everybody. How you doing? I love you, and God bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, let's begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for this new video. I thank you for your word. I thank you for everything you're showing me, Lord. I thank you. Every video I pray, Lord God, is for your glory, for your glory. And Father, right now I bless everybody who watches this video in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord God, that that that, that the, the presence of God is upon them right now who are watching, and they get godly wisdom and godly revelation from this video in Jesus' name. And Father God, I, I just ask Holy Spirit, speak through me so that I say the right things and correct things. And, and, um, and Father God, I pray that those who receive this receive only what the Lord wants them to receive. Receive only the golden nuggets. And if I slip up and say something wrong, Lord, let them understand to leave those on the ground, those false gold on the ground. I pray that only nuggets come out right now, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And Father God, I love you and I thank you. Amen. We are the church, or are we? Okay. Now, um, you know, I watch Facebook. Uh, I check out the. I'm, I'm trying to always do the Facebook and listen to the Word, and and do um, you know pray for people. I try to do everything I can for the Lord, and I'm still cooking, and and the and the, and the kitchen and preparing to go feed. The homeless and less fortunate today. You know, I stay pretty busy, but um, as I scroll through Facebook, you know, I watch and I get ideas of videos. And that's a little while ago, I got this idea of a video. Um, someone in the Lord um, who, I, who I love, you know, the uh, sister in the Lord had posted about, you know, don't go to church. We are the church. But we have to be very careful because when I first was um, saved, uh, I got a lot of persecution from the church because I wanted to to stand up and pray for everybody and tell everybody about Jesus. And um, and so I, I had got some resentment and hurt from the church when I eventually the Lord had pulled me out of the church and led me to do what I'm doing now. And every day I'm growing, every day I'm learning. And so one day while watching a video, um, I have to tell you, too, when I first came to the Lord's because I heard a voice say, you really want to help somebody? I was praying over somebody who was dying. He said, you really want to help somebody? Show people Christ in you. Okay, that goes to we are the church. If you show Christ in you, you're leading people to Christ because they're going to want what you have. And that's what the church was designed for, to lead people to Christ and to help them grow. There's all these, these jobs in the church, you know, to help them grow. To um, be there when they when when they're when they're going through these troubles, you know, there's all these all these things that the church, you know, and we understand that that um, that a lot of the churches ain't they ain't preaching full gospel. We we know this, okay. But what they're doing um, is they're they're bringing up Jesus and they're talking about him, you know. Um, I'm talking about the Christian church, okay. You know, it doesn't matter to me about any other church. It's a Christ-centered church. Um, and so I was crying one day watching a video because of the mega churches and that these doctrines are preaching. It's crazy. And I was just crying in my living room. And 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 then the Lord says, son, uh, don't worry. Pray for the churches. You know, even Christians need Jesus. And then he told me, he said, um, uh, he said, I could use them. Uh, churches that, that preach one third of the gospel, I could use them. He goes, he goes, I pulled you out. I pulled you out. Because I went to the church and I learned a lot. Those sermons were amazing. They spoke to me. They cut to my heart. Okay? But I wanted more. My spirit's hungry for, for to please God. So God pulled me out and sent me to another church. And I was in there with just, you know, I just I wanted more. And he pulled me out. And he put me on the streets. And he put me in the video church. And I still go to a church when I can. Uh, a church in Modesto, a house of rest. I love them. They're awesome. But you have to understand that no church is perfect. But you want a church that's growing, that's growing. And, and, and that's, you know, the, the church that I go to when I can go to church. But yes, I believe I am the church. But we have to examine ourselves before we start saying, don't go to church. Because God is using the churches. Even the one third. He said, I could, he said, I will pull my kids, my children out of the church and send them in directions I want to send them. 
or I'll keep them there. You know, it just depends on God's will. God's will. Okay? If you know for a fact this church is preaching the wrong gospel, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that God can't use that church. Because you know the whole world is trained and raised up in a custom that when you want Jesus, you got to go to a church, right? That's how we're brought up. Okay, so God knows your heart. So when those churches are positioned, even though you know that a lot of them ain't functioning like they're supposed to, those churches are positioned throughout the world. So for when somebody is starting to feel the tug in their heart, when God draws them in, he sends them to a church. They go to a church because that's all they're raised. When you're ready for God, you walk in the doors. And then the church can minister to them and all that. And even if it's a one-third gospel church, God can let them get that one-third gospel and then pull them out and use them as he wills, you know? What if God sends you to another church for a year or two? What are you going to do there? Are you going to complain? Are you going to are you going to complain and say, oh, man, this church is not right? Or are you going to be a blessing while you're there? And if the Holy Spirit leads you out, then you go. You go wherever the Lord leads you. Okay, now, why am I saying this? Okay. Because we have to be very careful about telling people not to go to church because God can use the church to bless the person that you're saying not to go to church. I say go to church. Be a blessing. Go. Okay? And, and then let God lead you to all truth and let God lead you. You know, maybe there's somebody in that church that's not preaching the full gospel. Okay? That's sitting right next to you that needs Jesus. And you got him in you. You could turn and bless that person and, and, and meet them. And then you and them could have a, a godly relationship. And you could sow into them. They could sow into you. You just never know. It's God's will. So, and I know that right now there's a lot of people that are complaining about the church. But you know what? If you find the church that bothers you, pray for them. Pray for them. They need Jesus, right? Also, too, we, we can't focus on what the enemy's doing. We have to focus on what God's doing. What's God doing in my life? What's God doing in my life? So, now you say you are the church, right? Okay, so if you are the walking church, let's check this out. If, you are the, if I'm the walking church, am I preaching the word? Okay? Am I laying hands on the sick? Am I there for my brothers and sisters who are struggling? Am I ministering to them? Am I um, casting out devils? Am I raising the dead? Am I going to all the nations? Okay? Am I helping people grow? Am I, am I bearing fruit? Am I, am I just saying God bless you every day and all of a sudden someone cries and I'm like, hey, are you all right? And then you get to minister to them. See, because if you're doing the Great Commission, then you're the church. If you believe you're a disciple and you are making disciples, then you are the church, okay? To be a Christian, a walking church, you have to be Christ-like, okay? So you can't sit there and say, I am the church, but you're not bearing fruit. But you're not doing what pleases God. Okay, now check this out. Okay, check this out. So, so now you are the walking church, and you're, and you're doing everything God tells you to do, okay? He's going to teach you how to fight against the, the devil's plans. He's going to teach you how, how to help people, bless people, pray for people, minister to people, uh, preach the word of God to people. He's going to teach you all things because you're the temple of the living God. You're the ministry of the Holy Spirit through you is the church. So if you're the walking church, then... All these things you should be experiencing in your walk as the church, right? I mean, I mean, you can't say, I am the church. I don't need to go to church. But I am the church. Are you the church? You have to examine yourself. I do all the time. Okay? So now if you have a relationship with God and you are the walking church, God's going to see and he's going to send people. There could be somebody right now in a church, in a one-third gospel church, and they're missing the two-thirds of the gospel that they're hungering for. And God's going to know you're right down the street from them walking, okay? And he's going to pull them and lead them to you because you are open.
obedient and you are a walking church. You are the temple of the living God. He is, he is growing you. He's transforming you. And he's going to send people to you. Imagine that. Is God sending people to you? Is God sending people to you to you should pour life into them and love into them? Because if he is, you, you are becoming the walking church or already in that area where God trusts you because you're responsible with what you carry. Let's look at something real quick. Um, what does the Bible say about Christian responsibility? Without a question, the greatest reason that we live for God is unwavering belief in the resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. It is through his resurrection from the grave that we have hope and the promise of life, eternal life with him. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Apostle Paul explains that because of these promises of future resurrection and the living and of living in eternal kingdom, believers have not only the motivation, but also eternal responsibilities for our lives here on earth. We are responsible. We have to be responsible in Christ. Okay. Apostle Paul touches on such responsibilities, including statement on chapter 15 of his first letter to the Corinthians. He declares that if we really believe and if we are truly thankful that our, that our resurrection is sure, we should therefore demonstrate our assurance and our thankfulness by standing firm, letting nothing move us, and always giving ourselves full to the work of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. This then is the believer's responsibility to stand firm in the faith and give himself completely to the Lord. If you give yourself completely to the Lord, he is going to bear fruit through you. You are his tool, his vessel, and his um, donkey that he that carries Jesus. Remember the donkey carried Jesus? That's the only, the donkey's whole life was to carry Jesus. And the whole world seen it. The whole, well, in Palm Sunday, the, 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 the people seen the donkey carry Jesus. Do people see you carry Jesus? Okay. The Greek for standing firm is hedrios which literally refers to being seated, being settled, and firmly situated. For the Greek, letting nothing move you. Nothing, no, let nothing move you. Is ametakinitos. Okay, I don't know that word. And it carries the same basic idea for this, for, for with, but with more intensity. So don't let nothing move you. Don't let the fact that there's so much wrong, and, 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 and it's not every church, you have to understand. Because I know um, that I would say 85% of, of, of people who say they're Christians are lukewarm. Okay? We'll say 80% lukewarm. So that means there's 20% on fire doing the will of God, speaking truth. Okay? So that means 20% of the churches are doing what they're supposed to do. But it don't matter. God told me clearly he can use every church for his will. Okay. Um, it means being totally immobile and motionless, indicating that we should not even budge an inch for from his will. We shouldn't budge an inch from his will. And with our being totally within the God will, we are to be always giving ourselves to the work of the Lord. Being careful not to be tossed back and forth like the waves and blown here and there by every winding when teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful schemes, Ephesians 4.14. Okay. Um, you have to understand that we, we have a responsibility. The Bible teaches that our responsibility of believers is to work uncompromisingly uncom as the Lord has gifted us and lead and leads us in this life. We must fully understand that until the Lord returns, there are souls to be reached and ministries of every sort to be performed, okay? If you are the walking church, you have a lot of ministries in you, and you got to be working at that and doing that, okay? We are responsible. We are, we are responsible for our money, our time, our energy, and our talents, okay? Gifts, bodies, minds, and spirit, okay? We should invest in nothing that does not in the same way contribute to the work of the Lord. 
James tells us, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without the deeds are dead, James 2.26. Okay? The work of the Lord, if it is truly for him and done in his power, cannot fail to accomplish what he wants accomplished. Every good work believers do has eternal benefits that the Lord himself guarantees. Jesus tells us, Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done, Revelation 22, 12. Simply put, our responsibility lies in the working for the Lord, whether it is in looking after orphans or widows in distress, James 1, 27, given to the hungry, the naked, visiting those in prison, Matthew 25, 35 to 36, serving in our workplace, Colossians 3.22, or doing whatever we do, Colossians 3.23. And our motivation is that we have God's own promise that our work is not in vain in the Lord, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as your reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving, Colossians 3.24. Okay, now I'll check this one out right here. All right, so am I the church? Are you the church? Okay. We are the temple, the building of the living God. Are you the church? What is the Great Commission? Answer. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Okay. It says, therefore, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Okay, Con Matthew 28, 19, 20 contains what has come to be called the Great Commission. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always. Praise God. To the very end of the age. Jesus gave this command to the apostles shortly before he descended into heaven. Okay, and it essentially outlines what Jesus expects of the apostles and those who follow him to do in his absence. Jesus said that and went to heaven and left the sandals. Check this out. And we who say we are the church put our feet in the sandals and take over where he left off. Are you bearing fruit? Are you? Casting out devils? Are you preaching? Are you telling people about Jesus? Are you shouting from the rooftops? You know, are you declaring the works of the Lord? I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. Okay, think about that. It is interesting that in the original Greek, the only specific command in Matthew 19, Matthew 28, 19 to 20 is make disciples. The great this commission instructs us to make disciples while we are going throughout the world, and while we are going about our daily activities. How are we to make disciples? By baptizing them and teaching them all that Jesus commanded. Make disciples is the command of the Great Commission. As you are going, baptizing, teaching are the means by which we fulfill the command. Make disciples. If we are the church, walking church, we are making disciples. Remember, where's the fruit? Many understand Acts 1.8 as part of the Great Commission as well, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be a witness in Jerusalem and all in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What? You will be a witness when the Holy Spirit comes upon you? So is the Holy Spirit upon you, and are you being a witness? For Jesus, is the Holy Spirit's ministry flowing through you? Is every day God sending people to you so you can be a witness to them? Because when you're responsible, God will trust you and send people to you. Not so that you could tell them, don't go to a church or don't do this. Or, no, no, no. You love them and you show them Christ in you. The hope of glory. We are to be Christ's witnesses, fulfilling the Great Commission in our cities, Jerusalem, and our states and countries, Judea and Samaria, and anywhere else God sends us to the ends of the earth. 
So I pray this blesses you. All right, I'm going to read a scripture real quick. Um, this is going to be from the, um, this is called Place Christ Before All Else. And I'll, I'll be reading Philippians 3, 4 to 11. Place, place Christ above all else, okay? Four, 4 to 11. Let me see. Let me do that again. 4 to 11. Philippians 3, 4 to 11. And it says, um, though I could have confidence in my own effort, if anyone could indeed, if others have reason for confidence in their own efforts, I even have more. I have even more. Unfit chapter, uh, verse 5. I, am, I was circumcised when I was eight days old. I am a pure-blooded citizen of Israel and remember of the a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew. If there ever was one, I was a member of the Pharisees who demand the strict obedience to the Jewish law. I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church. And as for right, it says, I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church. And as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. I, uh, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ, Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting in all Counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to There we go. I want to suffer with him sharing in his death so that no way, no one, so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. Okay. Place Christ before all else. As verses 4, 6 attest, the Apostle Paul was the epitome of, good, of a good Jew. He had been born a member of God's chosen people and has flawl and has flawlessly kept God's laws. But when Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus, see Acts 9, 1 to 19, Paul realized that everything he was living for was taking him in the wrong direction. For that reason, he counted everything else in life, his reputation, his achievements, his pursuits, his possessions, worthless, so that his sole pursuit would be in knowing and serving Jesus. Do you, like Paul, place Christ above everything else in your life? If you are not sure, ask yourself the following question. How do you spend more? How do you spend your time? What dominates your thoughts? Where are your priorities? What motivates you? If the most important thing in your life is Jesus, then your life will revolve around getting to know him more and more every day. You will want to spend time learning about his nature, his will, his purposes for you in this word, his purposes for you in his word. And you will truly be able to say that you have discovered the infinite value of knowing Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I pray that you are the church. I pray that you walk and be a disciple that you're called to be. Because when you say yes to Jesus, you're saying yes to being a disciple. There's no way around it, okay? And uh, we should pray for the church. We should pray for the church, okay? And, um, and, and you have to understand that not every church is, is, is perfect, okay? If God leads you to come out of it, then come out, okay? But if he leads you to go into the church, then do it. We all have to be the church. We all have to be. We are the church. But your life should reflect. Your confession that Jesus is Lord should show in your walk, should show in your actions. Okay? I love you and God bless you. I pray this blesses you. <laughs>
Heavenly Father, I thank you right now. I bless everybody watching in Jesus' name. I thank you for them. I bless their finances. I bless their health, Lord God. I pray health over them, life over them. Father, I pray, Lord God, they know you. I pray, Lord God, they hunger and thirst for you. I pray, Lord God, that their generations to come is going to know you and hunger and thirst for you. I pray, Lord God, that those watching will have an intimate relationship with you, that they know Christ and people see Christ through them in Jesus' name. I love you and God bless you. Be the church. Go share Jesus with somebody. Bye-bye.